All right, today we are talking about severs or heel pain in young kids. Now, the heel pain that you get with severs is around this area. Now, it's really, really common in young kids who play a lot of sport, do a lot of running between about the ages of eight and about 14. Now, the reason for that is because their bones are growing long, okay, and they're growing through, probably through a growth spurt. Between eight and 14, they're going through a growth spurt. And some kids, the bones grow quite quick and they grow quicker than the Achilles tendon and all the muscles. So what happens down here at this point where they get sore is that it gets stretched a lot and gets really, really inflamed in there and becomes pretty red. Sometimes you see it red, sometimes you don't, but it's definitely tender. And when they are playing sport, jumping, kicking, running, those sort of things, they start getting pain in there. Now it can get really bad that they have to stop. Now, the thing about severs is don't stress. The good thing about it is that it does go away. They do grow out of it. But some people take a little bit longer than others. It does depend on the sport, depends on the person, depends on where their foot rolls in or not, depends on how fast they're growing, a lot of different factors. Some people get it really mild. What I'm going to show you today is what we do in the clinic as far as taping to help alleviate the symptoms, a little bit of advice on what you should be doing with severs, but also how to do some strengthening work to help them along through their journey. So first thing I'm going to talk about is the actual tendon problem. So if you imagine the calves here, when that calf comes down, you come into an Achilles tendon. Now, don't confuse this with tendinopathy or tendonitis. That usually doesn't happen in young kids. That's you, you us oldies, when we get old, we start doing overuse injuries, and it's usually due to biomechanics of maybe feet rolling in or knees rolling on or something like that and probably some calf problems and overload affecting our Achilles tendon, but it's not really that. It might be tender, so when you squeeze that tendon, they go, oh, my tendon hurts, but don't confuse that with tendinopathy. So make sure you get that assessed properly and make sure that it is a severs growing pain type disorder, not a tendonitis and spine, because usually those tendons look exactly the same left and right, and they're no different. So with this one, the attachment point is the one that needs to be supported. The attachment point is one that's getting sort of yanked away a little bit, and that needs to be secured down. So what I like to do is help the kid by taping this anchor point, because they've got to rest, number one, from the aggravating things. Now, some people, it's very mild and they don't have to rest too much. If it's really, really sore, of course, they're going to have to rest, and the rest does settle it down, but it won't really go away properly until that person has probably gone through that growth phase and the rest of the calf and Achilles has caught up, if you like. So it could last between three months, six months, could last up to a year or two years through these problems. So sometimes kids have to stop exercise quite a bit. Other times they can sort of train through it. So this is what you do. This taping here, what we aim to do is tape down like the anchor point. So from this point here, I'm going to put that tape on the back of the heel and pull that right down and lock it down. Now I'm going to do a few of those and in between each one, what we do is we tape a little bit underneath the heel to give a bit of support under there. So we come up underneath the heel and that gives us another little bit of tape to anchor on. But the biggest thing is taping down that attachment point of the Achilles. And I find that really helps reduce the sort of effective load that's going through that tissue and creates a more stable anchor point, just a bit of support. And these kids need that support. If they're gonna keep playing, running around the playground, um, and it's only mild, the less pain, the better, the more support. Remember, you're not gonna damage it by playing on. You'll just get the point where they can't play because it's too sore and they're going to have to do some rest. So some part of the, you know, treatment, if you like, is management of that sport and how much volume, how much load. They might have to reduce trainings. They might have to skip some games. Maybe they do less playing of the games. They're not on for as long, that sort of thing, just so they can get through it and not aggravate it as much. So that's the sort of thing we do there is we try and tape that up and really anchor that down. The other type of taping we can do is doing a bit of a kinesio taping going up the calf. So that will support the Achilles tendon and help that sort of push off. And you'll find that when you support the calf muscle and the tendon, the anchor point is not as bad. So a kinesio taping from the physio is a really good thing to do as well. So that's your taping part. Let's have a look at the strengthening.
Remember, you've got to keep it simple for kids. So I would start with just two exercises to begin with, and then you can progress along as they get better. The first thing I think about is isometric loading. You don't want this tendon getting weak from all the pain and the inflammation that's going through. So we've got to keep the strength up. And part of why they keep getting sore is because it starts getting weak and then it can't handle load. So we can strengthen it while they're healing, while they're getting through the severs problem, the better result, the more game time they can do. So what we work on is isometric single leg calf raise. And there's two options you can do on that. One with the straight knee, one with the bent knee. So straight knee, what I want you to do, if you go up onto your toes, and so come up onto your toes, he goes up onto his toes, keeps his knee straight, and then he's got to lift that leg and hold it. Now, this is quite hard for kids. Their calf endurance is quite hard. They've got to try and keep this up for at least 20 seconds. Now, I would start with 20, then go to 30, then go to 40. But make sure that knee stays straight for the first one. And you'll see they'll drop down a little bit. And you've got to try and keep them up as high as they can. And a little bit of pain with that is okay. The isometric work, drop down again for me, mate, is actually going to really help them. So by the time they've done sort of 50, they'll be fatigued but it'll probably be less sore down through here. So that's the straight leg one. Now you can also do a bent knee one. So if you go up again for me, up you come, and then he bends his knee a little bit, and that'll work on a little bit more sole layer strength through here. So if the knee's bent here, and he's still raising up, raise that foot for me, lift it up, good. He stays here with a bent knee, then you'll find that you get a little bit more sole layers type strengthening to help as well. So that's the isometric stuff. Now, drop down again for me. The eccentric tenor loading, once you've done that, and I'll probably do that for the first week or so, just keep working on that, plus some stretching, which I'll show you in a minute. But the eccentric strengthening part is probably after the first week of doing, doing those isometrics. So what they need to do now is go up on two and down on one. So come up on two for me, up onto your toes. Keep your knees straight. Raise your left foot in the air. He's got to hold it there. And then slowly lower this heel down to the ground and then put two feet flat again. And then up onto your toes, up you go, straighten the knee, keep the heel up, raise the foot, slowly down with the heel, keeping the knee straight. Now, now we need a lot of instruction with that because that's quite a difficult thing to get through the head. But that's a real game changer in trying to improve the strength down through here, especially at the insertion point. So that one should be done, uh, like I said, after the first week, and then it's the stretching. So it's also important to stretch because, hey, this bone's growing longer, right? So this is really tight. So a little bit of flexibility in the calf is going to take the tension off the Achilles. Now, we don't normally stretch the pain away, we're going to strengthen and take the pain away and a bit of time and a bit of load reduction, that sort of thing. So you shouldn't be aiming to stretch out the pain. You're trying to stretch the calf and the Achilles and the soleus to reduce the tension that's happening down at this thing that's causing the problem in the first place, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, the easiest stretch to do for kids is do it off a step. If you haven't got a step, create a step like a piece of wood. If you've got a stairs in your house, they've got to hold on to the banister and hang off the stairs. So for this sort of thing, we've got a bit of wood. He's going to do a stretch. So you do it on one at a time. So if he puts his foot right on the edge, so the forefoot, or like this part of the foot, is on the edge of the step, okay, or the block. So he's got some grip on his shoe. I always do it in shoes. He's got some grip there to hang on. This one stays forward. This one drops down. So he puts his heel down to the ground, keeps his knee straight. So he's going to use the quads a little bit and then try and bring the hip forward a bit by keeping the knee straight and the heel down. And he'll feel it up in here. You'll feel it mostly up in the top of the gastrox. Okay, they're going to be tight. So that's one for the gastrox. For your soleus, all you simply do is just bend the knee as well. So he's going to bend the knee, try and keep his heel down, and he'll feel that lower down. Now those stretches need to go for a minute. Now that's hard for kids, so at least try 30 seconds, get to 45. By the time they get used to it, try and get to a minute. That will make the difference and get the three sets in every single day. Same with those calf raises. You've got to think about three sets of the calf raises, or maybe 10 reps. The isometric work, you've got to think maybe five or six reps 
of doing 30 to 45 seconds. So it's quite a lot of work, but that makes the difference. Now, the other thing you want to think about is sometimes these problems come off that button, mate. Sometimes these problems happen because, you know, one, they're growing, but if that person is rolling the ankles in because they are a natural, quite heavy pronator, it's not going to help. They're probably going to find you get more problems if this person rolls their ankle in. Now, in, say, basketball, you basically got basketball shoes, but what you can do with basketball or rugby or soccer or any sort of running sport where you've got a set shoe that you can't get a structured running shoe for, like a set shoe that has no sort of difference in structural support, you can put a heel raise in. Sometimes you have to go as far as orthotics, but start with a little four millimeter or depending on what your physio says, a heel raise underneath the inner sole, inside the shoe, will lift up that heel take the load off the Achilles. So that's a good one. That's what the physio will probably put in that shoe. But if you've got, if that person is a runner, or they do a lot of sport, getting a structured, decent kids shoe rather than a flat shoe. So something like this, which is an Asics GT, is going to give them a lot more grunt in the back here. It's a high pitch shoe at the back, which is going to take the load off the Achilles. That will be a better option for them for that year, maybe going forward to get them out of that Achilles pain a little bit faster. So if you've got those problems, definitely get in the physio, get that assessed, see if you can make some of those changes and even tape yourself. See you next time.